Okay, so this is the other bookshelf that's in my room. Uh, this is the biggest bookshelf I have. This is actually a baker's shelf uh, for your kitchen that I picked up at a consignment so shop. So on this top shelf here, these are just small books that I like to display together. This is a little book of Mark, Mark Twain quotes, a old style uh, vest pocket rhyming dictionary, which my mom actually gave to me. Right here we have Fight Club by... Chuck Palahniuk? I can never pronounce this. Song of Myself by Whitman. Ernest Hemingway, Old Man in the Sea, which I really, really hated, but I think I need to go back and reread this. The Lays of Marie de France, who is a medieval writer. You'll see a lot of medieval stuff. I've taken a lot of classes on medieval literature. This is Gawain and the Green Knight, which I've read probably four times now for different classes, but I still love. Persuasion by Jane Austen. Howl's Moving Castle, Steinbeck of Mice and Men, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Then we have a little book, Angel, which I thought was appropriate, and a painting that one of my friends was just going to throw away, so I saved it. Uh, okay, Fahrenheit 451, excuse me, 451, um, which I am an awful English major and have actually not read yet. Redwall, which I haven't read. Hiroshima. Tolkien's Unfinished Tales, which I'm saving till after I read all of the Lord of the Rings. Oh, I love this. Okay, this is Heat Wave. And I really have to wonder how many people think Richard Castle is a real author. This is based on the TV show Castle that's on ABC. Um, and it's great. I loved it. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. In Our Time, which honestly saved Hemingway for me. Chekhov's uh, The Cherry Orchard. Dead Man Walking by Sister Helen Prejean, which is signed by her. And these two are actually the books that I brought home for homework. A retelling, I guess, of Snow White. Uh, the Catcher in the Rye, which I guess you can see that probably is falling apart because both my brother and I read that. Macbeth and The Merry Wives of Windsor. And I actually have a whole collection of these little uh, mass market Shakespeare's back at school, and I have no idea where I'm going to put them when I bring them back. Over here we have a Pride and Prejudice movie cover, The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoe, Linda Hogan Power, which I wasn't crazy about, Voltaire, okay, if anybody thinks that classics cannot be comedic, you have never read Candide. And I love the cover because it's like a little cartoon of everything that happens in the book. The bookseller of Cobble, which I reviewed on my blog, Salman Rushdie, uh, Saroon in the Sea of Stories, Peter Pan, Into the Forest, Love in the Time of Cholera, which I haven't read either of these, and I don't actually know why I have this one, I just found it one day. Samuel Beckett, Waiting for Godot, Simon Kid, I have both The Secret Life of Bees, which I've read, and The Mermaid Chair, which I haven't read, and then Brave New World, which I just read this summer and loved. Here we have Outlander, which I was gifted for my birthday and haven't had a chance to read because, as you can see, it's a monster of a book. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which I read um, and loved, but I would never ever buy this mass market paperback edition again because it's so hard to keep open when you're reading, which sounds dumb, but it's true. This is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith, Bird by Bird, which I've started five times and I swear this next time I'm actually going to finish reading, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I haven't read, Welcome to the Monkey House, which I've only read part of, Henry David Thoreau, uh, Walden, and Civil Disobedience, and Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, which is an awesome name to say, Toni Morrison, Song of Solomon, Don DeLillo, White Noise, and Teaches to Outgrow Our Madness by Ken Zaburo, uh, The Awakening, Kate Chopin, Tales from Ovid, and this is a kind of a translation and edition by Ted Hughes, Thomas Mallory, La Morte d'Arthur, um, or D'Arthur, I guess, I don't know, I can't speak French, One Day by Nav David Nichols, this is amazing, I read it all in two days, and was so emotional afterwards, it was really good. Um, we have more plays by Chekhov, Things They Carried, um, not for sale. It's actually not just a book, it's a whole organization. This really opens your eyes to a lot of things and it's a great, very quick read. Next we have Secret Diaries of Charlotte Bronte, which my mom got me and I loved it. Julie and Julia, uh, which is actually the movie edition, but it's way different and I actually hate to say it, but I think I liked the movie better. Fun Home, which is uh, a graphic novel. I've never read a graphic novel that wasn't manga before, and this is really good. It's a little shocking. There's a lot of talk about homosexuality and a lot of an anatomically correct drawings, but if you're kind of, if you are an open-minded reader um, and you like graphic novels, you should check that one out. Okay, so now this is the last shelf of this particular bookshelf. The Children of Hearn and the Cimmerillion by Tolkien. Here we have a illustrated dictionary to Tolkien's world. Uh, the Once and Future King by T.H. White, which if you are at all interested in medieval literature or anything to do with King Arthur, you need to read another collection of Lord of the Rings. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which is one of two copies I have. 40 short stories, an anthology, uh, Homer's Iliad, You Can't Win 
which is basically a turn-of-the-century con man story. Jane Eyre, The Odyssey. This one's kind of fun. This is Middle English, Breton Lays, and they're all in Middle English, um, which doesn't sound anything like modern English. All I remember the word knight, as in knight in shining armor, sounds like knicht. Grimm's Fairy Tales. And I have a book of traditional symbols because I was really into that in about eighth grade. <laughs>